full of God. I believe there's such a battle to be full of Jesus. I believe that there is a war across the earth to be full of Jesus. I've been talking to you and I talked to you last week about passions and the desires of God. I'm going to pinpoint one today, the passions and the desires of God. But I had to pause to teach you the passions and the desires of God. And I believe that as we start to look and God allows us to start to look into his heart and what's really in the heart of God and what he passions, what he desires and what he loves. I believe the two things are going to start to happen and are already happening. I believe number one, God is starting to wake up a church. I believe that God is going to wake up the church and he's starting to wake it up. And the second thing that is happening is that as we start to look into the heart of God, I believe not only is he waking up the church, but he is starting to mature the church. I believe that there is a cry in the heart of God to mature the church. And I believe that there is a cry in the heart of God to wake up the church. If you look at the parables in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 25, we find the parables of the bride and the Bible says they were all sleeping. All 10 were sleeping. And only one thing woke up the bride. And I'll leave that for next preaching. But there are several things that wake up the bride. And I believe that as we look into the heart of God, and as we look into the desires of God, no longer our desires, because we have to mature in love. And as we mature in love, and as we grow up in love, I believe that there are two things that are happening. God is starting to wake you up. And number two, I believe that maturity is starting to happen in the church. But I believe that there's also a battle for the fullness and to be full of Jesus. And so you can be seated, but if you're in the house of God, but if you're at home, you can do whatever, I guess, sit in your bed, sit on your couch. I believe that there is a war for fullness. And when I speak of fullness, I believe that everybody is full of something. We are full of all kinds of things. But if there's ever been a war for us to be full of Jesus, I believe that the war is now. We, we, we are full of all kinds of things. The enemy would probably work over time at night while you're sleeping to get you full of disappointment, to get you full of sadness. The enemy would work over time to probably get you full of discouragement, full of negativity, full of fears and anger and all kinds of resentment so that the body of Christ can be full of entitlements full of pride, full of the flesh, full of hopelessness in a world as we now see it, full of the past, still harking on the past, filled with probably current situations that are happening. And it is the job of your enemy to battle you, to fight you, to wrestle you so that you are not full of Jesus. This is a war to be full of Jesus. There is a war and there is a battle to be full of God right now. Situation as we know it. To look around and be full of everything that is happening rather than be full of Jesus, rather than be full of God regardless of what is happening, regardless of what we are seeing on the earth. So many people are so full of so many things. And there is a war. And I'm talking about believers. I'm not just talking about non-believers. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about pastors. I'm talking about so many leaders across the earth. You're beginning to be full of something that Jesus did not design you to be full of. We are called to be full of Jesus. We are called to be full of God in the hour that we live in until it's coming. As a matter of fact, being full of Jesus should be our nature. Being full of his nature. It is the greatest purpose of why you were formed. It is the greatest reason of why you were formed in your mother's womb. Why God allowed you to live in such a time as this. It was the very reason why God set and orchestrated for you to be born on such a year and to be here at such a time. The very purpose was so that the nature of God can be formed inside of you. The reason why Jesus delivered you, do you remember the day of your salvation? The day that God saved you, the day that God delivered you. He delivered you from all kinds of stuff. That was the first step. That was not the final journey. 
The journey that we ought to be on is that Christ should be formed in us. That Christ Jesus, his image of his son Jesus should be formed on the inside of us. That is the greatest purpose for Jesus to be formed on the inside of you. Because I said to you on Wednesday, but let me paraphrase, Jesus saves us for something, from something. He saved us from something. He delivered us from something so that we can be and enter into something. He delivers us from something for something. And that for something is so that Jesus can be fully formed on the inside of you. Many people stop at salvation. Many people stop at deliverance and then they become earthly. But that was not the greatest purpose. Why Jesus saved you and why Jesus delivered you was so that you can enter into something. And that is the formation of Jesus on the inside of you. Because we do not have a superficial gospel. This is not a religious gospel. He didn't save you so you can be superficial. He didn't save you and deliver you so that you can be religious. So that you can say, oh, well, God set me free from this and he he delivered me from sadness and he delivered me from depression. But the gospel is so much more than that. The gospel doesn't end there. The whole gospel and the greatest purpose of the gospel of Jesus is so that you can be formed into the image of Jesus. This is connected to the last days because As you connect it to the last days, you will find that Jesus, God, Almighty God, is going to perfect His work in the last days. He's going to mature a church in the last days. And the one that began to deliver you, the one that saved you, is going to perfect His work in the last days. The one that healed you is going to perfect His work in the last days. So Jesus can be formed inside of you in your life so that when people see your life, they don't just see, oh, you're a Christian, you go to church, but they actually see the formation of Jesus on the inside of you. See, the best thing that we can give other people is our transformation. That's a mouthful. The best thing that we can give everybody is our transformation. The best thing that you can give your spouse is your transformation. The best thing that you can give your family is your transformation. The best thing that you can give this earth is your transformation. Your transformation. Transforming into what? Transforming into the image of Jesus. That's the best thing that we can give the earth. To be transformed into the image of Jesus. To be transformed in Jesus. Because this is not about just serving God. This is not just about, will I serve God? Not just do the work of Jesus. Many want the work of Jesus. Many want to do the work of Jesus. But they don't want to be like Jesus. To do the work of Jesus is just, is just a moment. It's just an event. But to be like Jesus is a process. Where Jesus is formed inside of your life many people want the work of jesus but the work of jesus it's just a moment it's just a current moment a current event but very few want to be like jesus and the whole reason why jesus saved you and the whole reason why jesus delivered us is so that we can become like him i'll prove it to you in the scriptures galatians chapter 4 verse 19 Galatians 4.19, the Passion Translation reads as follows. It'll be on your screen. It says, you are my dear children. Help me read that. But I agonize. This is Paul talking. He said, I agonize in spiritual labor pains. Once again, until the anointed one, which is Jesus, will be fully formed in your hearts. Look what Paul is saying. He said, I'm in agony. Like a woman is in childbirth, I am in agony. And what is he in agony for? Paul, why do you have these childbirth, child labor pains? And why are you agonizing like a woman who's about to give labor? And he said, I'm in agony until, 
I see Jesus fully formed inside of your hearts. The whole gospel is really about Jesus being formed inside of our hearts. The whole gospel isn't about to call ourselves Christians and come to a temple. The whole gospel is about Jesus being formed on the inside of our hearts to become like him. But there's a war for this. There's a battle to be more like Jesus because we're full of so many things. The enemy will work double time, overtime, to try to make sure that you are full of current situations, that you are full still of your past, that the past is still haunting you, that you are full of all kinds of negativity in your life so that you are not transformed into the image of Jesus. You see, we can fill the temples, but Jesus, more than that, although he wants to do it and he's going to do it, but more than fill the temples, he wants to fill the people with him inside of the temple. Jesus is saying, is there somebody where I can display my power that will allow me to form a me inside of them? That is the gospel of Jesus. It is not just salvation. It is not just deliverance. It is for you and I to be formed in the image of Jesus. Our goal is to grow and to be formed into his image. That's why it is so key for you to be so delivered from the spirit of orphanhood. If you are not delivered from the spirit of orphanhood, you cannot manifest Jesus on the earth. You have to be free from the spirit of orphanhood. Be free from the spirit of insecurity, of dependence, of mysticism. All the symptoms that go with orphanhood, dissatisfaction, which leads to idolatry. Do you remember them? Mysticism, independence, which is a root of pride. You have to be free from insecurity, which is the root of fear and rejection. If you are not free from that, you cannot be formed into the image of Jesus. When you carry a spirit of orphanhood and all of its symptoms, it prevents you from even seeing the manifestation of Jesus through you on the earth. Hear what I'm gonna say. That's why it's key to be free from orphanhood and to be sons and daughters of God. You have to have a mentality as a son of God. You have to have a mentality as a daughter of God to be able to manifest Jesus on the earth. Because the one that walks like a son, the one that walks like a free daughter, manifests the nature of the father. You cannot manifest the nature of your father if you're walking around like an orphan because that is not the nature of God. So you have to be free from all these symptoms that are trying to cling on to you. You have to be free and fight this battle for the fullness of Jesus. Why? Because in order for you to manifest Jesus, we've got to walk like sons. In order to manifest the Father, the Father is not insecure. The Father is not rejected. The Father doesn't walk around like he's independent. The, the, the Father does not walk around like, like, you know, he's full of fear. The Father is not fearful. And when we carry fear, and when we're full of a lot of things, we are not manifesting who the Father really is. To be manifesting who the Father really is, we've got to walk like sons. We have to walk like daughters. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So why are you on the earth? You're on the earth, not just to populate it. You're on the earth to manifest your Father. You are on the earth to manifest who your father is. You're on the earth to manifest who Jesus is. That's why we're on the earth. You know your greatest success it is not just to be effective in what you do. Your greatest su success is not, oh man, I'm good at what I do. Your greatest success is not to be effective in, in what you do. Our greatest success is to have others see Jesus while I do what I do. Your greatest success is not to say, 
Hey, I'm really good at running this business now. Your greatest success is to, for people to see Jesus in you while you run that business. See, it don't matter what you do. You could be good at it, but that's not success. If you read Joel chapter 1 and Joel chapter 2, which speaks of the coming of Jesus, success, we have a wrong definition of success. True success is for people to see Jesus in you while you do what you do. God will ask you, not what you did, but when you did it, was Jesus revealed? When you did what you did on the earth, was my son revealed through you? Was my son really revealed through your life? That's what the gospel is, church. Renew your minds. The gospel is more than just salvation. That is the beginning of salvation. The next step is to be transformed into the image and likeness of who this Jesus is. Look what Romans, write it down, chapter 8, verse 29 says. For those God foreknew, he also predestined. So you're predestined. Predestined. Before destiny. God, before you were even born, God already wrote out your destiny. That's a good plan. Amen. That's a good deal. He said, for those God foreknew, he also predestined. Read that with me and slow. Let it get in your spirit. To be what? He predestined to what? To be conformed to the image of his son. So he says, I predestined you. I foreknew you. To what? To be and in the likeness of him, my son. To be conformed to his likeness. So I predestined you already. That means that it's possible to be like Jesus. That means it is possible to walk this earth and manifest Jesus on the earth. Because he says, I foreknew you. I foreknew you. I predestined you to what? To be conformed like Jesus the Son. That's why you're here to manifest Jesus on the earth. You know, you've been predestined. Jeremiah says it like this. I called you by name before you were even born. You are God's design. You are God's desire. You are so valuable to God. Jesus paid such a high price and the price was his blood. And your value is dictated by the one that's willing to pay the price. Jesus was willing to pay the price for you. You're ridiculously valuable. You, you, you are very valuable and don't you let anybody tell you otherwise. You are chosen. I don't care what anybody says. You are valuable. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, kings and priests on the earth to manifest the Father. God, however, it says in Romans, called you and he predestined you to what? To be conformed to the likeness of his son. So the main goal is to be like Jesus. That's our goal. That is our goal. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Colossians 1, 27. Let's read it together. And it says, To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery. So Paul's about to give us this mystery. It says, Which is Christ? Where is Christ? Is he, is he in the third heaven on the throne and, you know, he's not going to be, be, be visible to you? Where is Christ? Say in me, the hope of glory. What is the hope of glory? Paul said, I'm going to tell you this mystery. And, and Paul is really saying to all of us, I am inviting you to this profound way of thinking. Paul is saying, I'm going to change your mentality. Paul is saying, I am inviting you to a mystery that was only revealed by heaven. And he says, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus in you, the hope of glory. How can I be full of Jesus to release this hope of glory? Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
You were born to release the hope of glory. You were born to release hope on the earth where there is no hope. You were, you were, you were born to release this hope of glory. Hope of glory, write it down. It really means to reveal Jesus on the earth. To reveal Jesus on the earth means hope of glory. But hope of glory also means to look forward to something. Hope of glory means that there is something ahead that is bigger than what you are living right now. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hope of glory also means that you can face tomorrow and you can face right now because there's hope for your future. Hope of glory means that you can walk out the suffering, but there's something better coming. Hope of glory means that and this is a momentary affliction. This is a momentary desert because there is hope coming. Because there is a hope of glory that is coming. Hope of glory means that you can expect something to happen. That you can be joyful while you're walking out the desert. You can have a hopeful expectation. You can have this hope of glory that is coming. You can be expected. You can be joyful. This hope of glory. Why? Because God is going to fulfill the promises that he has promised across the earth. Hope of glory. Christ in me, there is hope of glory. The hope of glory that is coming. Therefore, I can walk through anything because there's a hope of glory coming. That means that I can walk through this desert because there's a hope of glory. Uh, that means that I can manifest Jesus because Christ in me, the hope of glory. That means uh, like a pregnant woman that's about to give birth uh, and she's waiting for her baby. Hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I've got hope because a baby's on its way. The promises of God are yes and amen to him that receives it. See, you, can, you cannot be... <laughs> There can't be glory if you don't know what you're expecting. There are so many people on the earth, and I believe that this is part of the sleepy church. The sleepy church has been sleeping to the times of the one that is to come. We, we've been asleep as a church. But when you wake up to what is coming, there's expectation. But most people live, live very earthly. You live in the now. You look at what's happening now. You look across the earth and you're going, oh, is there any hope? So what do you have? You have full of hopelessness. You're full of fear. You're feel, full of anxiety. You're full of sadness. You wake up and it's another day. You're full of all kinds of things. But Jesus did not save you, deliver you for you to walk like that. He said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We've got to wake up for the hope of glory the hope of glory that Jesus will be revealed that Jesus is coming back and you will see him with your own physical eyes there is a hope of glory that God is not going to leave you halfway that God is going to answer hey, he's going to answer you and that includes your resurrected body that Jesus is coming back I can't wait for Jesus to come back I can't wait for Jesus to come back that there is hope of glory but see, many people don't have hope. They're full of a lot of things, but they have no hope. They're hopeless. God wants to restore the hope of glory on the earth. Many have hope in many things. You have hope in you get the job. You have hope that you get the pay raise. You have hope that you get this, that, and the other. But God wants to restore the hope of glory. The hope of glory makes you wake up. And, and expectant about tomorrow, the hope of glory. When you look at Christ and his coming, the hope of glory makes you walk through any desert. The hope of glory doesn't make you full of sadness or, or discouragement. No matter what you see, the hope of glory makes you look ahead and say, God, uh, I can't wait. Uh, I know there's a hopeful glory coming. I know there's a glory coming on the earth. I know that you're about to bring a great revival. God, I don't understand it. I don't know your ways. Uh, but my ways are not like your ways. I don't understand it. But my thoughts are not like your thoughts. But one thing I do know. That I have Christ in me. The hope of glory. And that one day I am seeing the glory of the Lord manifested across the earth. Paul said it like this. He said, I have labor pains. So that Jesus can be formed inside of you. Jesus in us will restore the ability in humanity to restore all the glory that God wants to restore. There's a war for fullness, beloved. There's a battle in your life for fullness. 
There's a war every day that you have to get up and fight to be full of Jesus, regardless of what you face. There's a war for fullness of Jesus. Will you be full of Jesus? Or will you be full of the world? Will you be full of Jesus? Or will you be full of anxiety? Will you be full of Jesus? Or will you sometimes be full of Jesus and sometimes be full of hopelessness? Will you be full of Jesus sometimes? And then other times you'll be full of anxiety and, and you have no strength to get up that day? That's not how you're called to live. You're called to live with Jesus, the hope of glory on the inside of you. And I'm going to teach you how. You're called to live with Jesus, the hope of glory, always inside of you. Are you full of Jesus? Or are you full of some Jesus and not all of Jesus? Because what you're full of, I said it to you and I will repeat it. What you are full of defines your hope. The Israelites were full of unbelief. The Israelites were full. When God takes them out of Egypt, the Israelites were full of unbelief and they were full of of, of, of doubt and they were full of rebellion and it led them where? Nowhere. To die in a wilderness. Because what you are full of defines your hope. Christ in you, the hope of glory. When Christ is in you, your hope is glory. If you look at the Bible, you will find Saul. Saul, who got anointed to be king, but he was full of jealousy. And where it led him, his hope was he died by the sword. Became a murderer when he started out to be a king. What you are full of will define your hope. Elijah was full of the presence of God. Therefore, he could birth the promises of God. Abraham was full of faith, the Bible says. It was a, he was a man of faith, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Therefore, the man was able to have a child and populate the earth. The man was able to birth the promises of God. The man was able to step into a destiny. Why? Because he was full of God. He did not listen to anything else. He was full of God. Noah was full of God. He is not full of the voices of the earth. He was not full of the voices of the of the world he was full of God and because of that him and his family were saved on the boat what are you full of what do you fill yourself up with this is good today the question is what are you filling yourself up with daily not just the church not just because you came to an atmosphere like this if you're full of fear, you can expect negative things to come. Because what you are full of defines your hope. Get that in your spirit. Every day when you feel anxious, what you are full of will define your hope. But when you are full of Jesus, there's a glory. And expect all the possibilities of the glory of God to be manifested in your life when you are full of Jesus. You can expect good things to come. When you are full of Jesus, you can expect there's a hope coming. There's a glory coming. I don't know the day. I don't know the hour, but I'm full of Jesus. And rest assured that something good's on its way. Tell me what you're full of, and I'll tell you what you receive. So how do you fill yourself? How am I going to fill myself, Apostle, with Jesus? How am I going to be transformed into the image of Jesus? Because it's not just a goal. Oh yeah, I want to be more like Jesus. It is the gospel. You can't, you can, you cannot say to yourself, Jesus saved me, Jesus delivered me, and then stop right there. That is not the full gospel. You wound up religious. Because a full gospel is to say, and now I'm being transformed into the image of God. That's the full gospel. Being transformed into the image of God. It is your greatest goal every day. Paul is saying in the scriptures, he said, everyone that is filled with the nature of Jesus, everybody that is full of Jesus is being transformed to be like Jesus. The restoration of seeing the glory of God 
will occur with what you are willing to fill yourself up with. What are you filling up with? Are you full of politics? Is that all you hear all day, seriously? The news? Can you imagine your whole full expectation watching the news? The fake news? A lot of fake stuff. You're gonna be disappointed. Can you imagine putting your, your, your all filling up and filling up with social media? What are you gonna be full of? Flash and more flash and more flesh. That's why you gotta turn it off. I wanna be full of Jesus, why? Because the best thing I can give the earth is to be transformed into the image of Jesus. That is our goal and that is our greatest goal, to be transformed into the image of Jesus. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it was an encouragement for you, that it delivered you, set you free, that it brought revelation to your life. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell and you will always get notices to every message that we have every single week. Until next time, blessings.